Hello, this is Ricardo from the Interside product team. There are multiple ways to install an operating system from Interside. One way would be to simply trigger the installation from the server's view. This process has been described on another video. You can click on the info card on the top right corner to check that out. There are other scenarios where you want to use Interside Cloud Orchestrator. A typical case would be uh, when you want to create a service that extends over multiple technology domains. For instance, you may want to create a server profile, deploy it to a server, install an operating system and execute post-installation actions, like connect a freshly installed DSXI server to an existing vSphere cluster. In this video, we'll describe how to create a workflow to address exactly this use case. So we're going to create a new workflow. In the general tab, we give the name and set some properties. For instance, we enable debug logs as well as enabling retry in case the workflow execution fails or get terminated. Our first step in the workflow would be to create a new server profile from a template. We drag it in the design canvas and map the source profile template, which is the only mandatory input in this case. We want our end user to select the server profile, so we are going to create a new workflow input and direct map to the task input. We now need to map the created server profile to an existing server, and to do so we use the set server to server profile task. This time we map the profile input to the output of the previous task that returns the profile name. For the server input, we create a workflow input once again, uh, so the user will be able to select it during the workflow execution. Our third step is to deploy the server profile we created. Again, the profile input will be mapped to the profile output of the first task. We are now going to nest an existing workflow, which will be used as a standalone task in our larger workflow. To install an operating system, we pick the operating system install workflow. This workflow requires two input, the server for which we already have a workflow input, and the OS install inputs, for which we are going to create a new workflow input, which will allow the end user to specify the installation parameters. As the server will reboot at the end of the installation process, we want to wait like 10 minutes before moving forward with our workflow. So we are kind of sure that all systems are up and running. At this point, we have a new ESXi host. And we want to use it as a new hypervisor in an existing vSphere cluster. For this example, we want to give the user full control on where to use this new host. So we create a workflow input for the hypervisor manager data center and cluster inputs. For the host input, we want to use whatever IP the end user specifies for this installation. So we're going to take it from the OS install inputs answers using a direct mapping. The username of our ESXi host is always going to be root, so a static mapping would suffice. As the user has the ability to specify a password in the OS install inputs, 
we want again to extract from their answers. Finally, we want the host to connect and be available as soon as the installation is complete. Okay, our workflow is finished. We move forward with the validation to ensure that everything is in place and there are no errors. Let's go ahead and execute the workflow. Let's select an existing template from the InterSight inventory and a target server. We select the operating system we want to install, and in our case, it's going to be ESXi 6511. The installation mode is Cisco, so we can use Cisco validated templates. Let's move to the networking section. This is where we specify the network device we want to assign an IP to. In this case, we're going to have a static IP setup, so we go ahead and fill in the form with the desired IP address, subnet mask, gateway, hostname, and main servers. We also specify the desired root password for the SXI host. The SCU is a mandatory choice for Cisco mode and contains the required scriptlets and answer file to install an operating system unattended. We also need a target, and in this case it's going to be the server local RAID controller. Eventually we provide all hypervisor details to configure this host as part of an existing vSphere cluster. An important thing to notice is that all these fields are completely arbitrary. That's the way the workflow has been created. You can also dramatically simplify the end user inputs and have the user to only select an available server from a pool or configure all other parameters either statically or derived based on outputs from other tasks. When we're done, we trigger the workflow execution. The workflow executes sequentially, and we can see we already managed to create the server profile and assign to the target server. You can also monitor workflow executions from the request drawer by clicking on the request you are interested to inspect. The system will show all workflow steps and give you the chance to further double click on specific tasks of your workflow if you want to. We are now in the operating system install stage. From the server KVM session, we can see the SXI installation process. Once completed, the host is going to reboot and we will wait for additional 10 minutes as specified in the sleep task. Now the next step will configure this host as an hypervisor for an existing vSphere cluster. A quick look on our vSphere system reveals that the 100.15 host is being mapped to the ICO cluster under the RM Lab data center. Now, let's suppose you want to decommission this server or repurpose it for a different usage. InterSight supports rollback workflows which will automatically execute all necessary actions to reverse an execution. Rollback actions are configurable, so you can decide what task you want to roll back, or whether the workflow should roll back automatically if it fails, or get cancelled, or maybe both. As the process goes through, we can see the host disappearing from the hypervisor list. And we can also check the target server doesn't have a server profile assigned anymore. It's basically ready to be put back in a pool and maybe assign it to, to a different role. Thanks for watching. For additional info, please visit intersite.com/help.